everything starts with urbanization. And our story starts with urbanization. You see a big figure here, 2.5 billion. You would say 2.5 billion, not much. I live in Hong Kong, 2.5 billion more people on the planet uh, in the coming 25 years mean that you would build nearly a Hong Kong every month for 25 years. And it's a big city. This is what's coming, and the cities, therefore, will have to be tremendously more efficient and smarter to allow ourselves to live sustainably on the planet. Now, those cities are made of buildings, and those buildings consume more than half of the energy in the world, half of the electricity. And this figure of electricity in the coming 25 years is going to grow by 80%. Now, those buildings are not yet fully safe. There are two figures here. Just in France, 600,000 electrical incidents. If you see energy efficiency as a reservoir of 100%, we have barely scratched the surface. Only 18% has been consumed of the potential. There is still 82% of energy efficiency entitlement in front of us. And every time we go in a building, we know, let's say an average building, there is a potential with active energy efficiency of 30 to 50% saving. That's huge. There are three things that are changing, that are paradigm shift for the building space. Number one, IoT. Uh, by 2020, there will be nearly more connected machines in a building than there are people on the planet. In homes, we see a multiplication of 13 points between now and 20, uh, um, 2020, which is really fast, in five years, in terms of number of connected devices coming in a homes. A thermostats, lighting control, you name it. So that's point number one. Point number two, a drastic cost, of, drastic re cost reduction of solar and storage, leading to green parity leading then to a massive tsunami of renewable everywhere. By 2040, we see 75% of the capacity, energy capacity being made with renewable. These are big, big changes. And the last one in building that we see as transforming is the fact that the design, the commissioning, the build of a building is becoming digital thanks to uh, a big suite of tools. Uh, many people talk about BIM, BLM that are truly transforming the way buildings are being designed, built, and operated. As many uh, real estate projects, Les Dunes started as a, a construction project and turned into a big transformation program. So to make a long story short, the, the COMEX of Société Générale asked Les Dunes to embody a digital transformation for Société Générale. Uh, so how do we do this? So we have three main pillars to materialize digital transformation uh, within this, uh, this building. Uh, we, we strongly believe in Société Générale that digital uh, transformation is about getting the best from technology and the best from human. So uh, the, the, th the three main pillars are, the first one is the building in itself and architecture. Uh, in its archi architecture, the building is very horizontal uh, is very open, it's green, uh, it's got uh, geothermy, it's very organic, so very different from what we know in La Défense with the uh, skyscrapers uh, uh, made of uh, glass and steel. Uh, the second pillar is the way the floors are organized, uh, the equipments and the services we will put in this building. Uh, so, a few examples, uh, we doubled the space for collaborative work in this building. Uh, we equipped it with really ha the, the best technology, but technology in Ledun is, uh, never oppresses. Uh, and we put a lot of services, uh, and humanized services, I would say. People are a bit tired of hotlines, web pages. So we wanted to have services with people. All the companies, in fact, uh, smallest one, of course, uh, to start and to grow, but also big companies need, uh, need to change, to transform themselves and to be much more human. Also, what we, uh, uh, what we give to our customers is that we transform 
um, traditional uh, assets, traditional buildings, into guest houses. Société Générale and Schneider are uh, connecting together uh, les dunes building, meaning that uh, we are equipping the building and uh, developing an app uh, that should allow us to dialogue with the building. So uh, the collaborators will have access through their smartphones to a lot of functionalities and services. For example, they will uh, they will know uh, what's what they can eat uh, for lunch, uh, and they, they will be able to monitor the, the wind shields, the lights, uh, the temperature from their smartphones. Uh, they will access a lot of services, but it's also for us, for uh, the real estate department, uh, a very good opportunity to monitor how the building is going to be used in order to be able to optimize the building continuously. BIM for us is not anymore an innovation because uh, our collaborators use BIM on a daily basis. So BIM not simply speaking about a nice Revit model, but really uh, a living platform following the project from site survey by 3D scanning and all these kind of things uh, during all design phases and uh, going to construction, procurements, cost control, and uh, maintenance. This is a really a collaborative uh, platform, not only between architect, MEP, and structural engineers, but we have developed a, a, a very efficient collaboration. For example, we can uh, st uh, simulate uh, some acoustic studies. We can make some uh, energy modeling, and this is what you can see on the slide regarding the al Stadium in Qatar. It was a very nice uh, project, and. Uh, even we had uh, some nice experience where uh, our team in Doha or in London were communicating by augmented uh, reality. Not uh, as a, uh, a tool to play and to, to have fun, but really uh, to design in a proper way the buildings and to visit the stadium and go to the right uh, elements where could be potentially failures to be solved. We talked a lot about the the, the stock of buildings today, I mean, again, if I look at the stock of buildings, I think 50% of buildings, by the way, in the UK certainly have been built before 1955. And to be able to retrofit these buildings is really important. So, in fact, Sylvain, are we doing anything with Wi-Fi or connectivity to ensure that we can actually do retrofit? Yeah, you're fully right, Tanuja, for sure. I mean, there's no reason why people in existing buildings should should not have the same I mean the same request for services uh, than the one uh, I mean entering in new buildings. So clearly uh, today we have developed some uh, offers based on wireless technologies in order to uh, to be able to uh, to generate data and uh, and generate services based on these data coming out from wireless technologies. So that it's 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 clearly very important to be able to target existing buildings. As clearly in Europe, for sure, the, I mean, the huge, the, the huge part of the market is existing buildings. So clearly we, we, we have developed a complete range of wireless uh, offers now. 